Although benchmarks seem to indicate that LLMs are reaching PhD level reasoning, why is it that they are still so bad at generating ASCII art? Is creating beautiful ASCII art a forgotten human skill that is unobtainable by machines? As all serious AI researchers are busy creating models for actually useful tasks, the only way to find out was by trying to fine-tune an LLM myself. Is it possible to improve the ASCII generation capabilities or will we have to wait until AGI? Let's find out. The reason I'm especially interested in the ASCII generation capabilities is because I'm developing a text-based RPG where all the actions of the users are interpreted by an LLM. Currently all enemies are also visualized by hard-coded ASCII art, but I eventually want to have an LLM to actually visualize the enemies. So for this video though, I decided to limit myself to the generation of ASCII cats, as besides being cute, it also limits the scope so I don't have to scrape half the internet to collect a large enough dataset. As I don't have a couple of H100s laying around and the only GPU I can freely access is the T4 of Google Colab, we are actually going to freeze the weights of the LLM and fine tune low rank matrices instead, which are then applied on top of the LLM weights. This is also called LoRa and by doing this we can drastically reduce the VRAM requirements for fine-tuning models. To do the actual LoRa fine-tuning we will be using Unslot, which is a very good Python library that includes some additional improvements by rewriting PyTorch modules into Triton kernels and by doing this um, we can reduce the memory required even further. I decided that I was gonna fine tune Llama 3.18 billion as the full precision version comes close to GPT 3.5 on benchmarks and the 4-bit quantization requires around 4 gigabytes of VRAM which allows me to fine tune it on Google Colab and run it locally on my MacBook. We will be using the completion variant of Llama 3.1 as the instruct version is already fine-tuned by Meta on a chat template to have conversations, but as we just want the LLM to generate ASCII art, the conversation template might actually mess with the capabilities of the model. The first step towards fine-tuning an LLM is collecting a dataset. ASCII art by itself is an ancient art, so I had to go searching through the depths of the internet, but eventually hit the jackpot with this uh, amazing website, which besides funny pictures of cats, also contained an entire archive of ASCII art. I collected an initial training set of 50 ASCII cats. Special shout out to the artists uh, Joanne Stark, Felix Lee and other anonymous artists uh, from which I use their ASCII art. As ASCII art contains many unusual characters, I wanted to explore a bit whether the Llama Tree tokenizer could handle this. So I put some examples of my training set in a notebook and compared the ASCII art before and after an encoding and decoding step. And doing this I discovered that some post-processing was turned on by default which would cause the ASCII art to slightly deform, so I had to turn this off. So now it was finally time to train my first model. I created a notebook on Google Colab which loads the 4-bit quantized version of the Llama 3.1 model, constructs a dataset by formatting all my ASCII art using a prompt I made, the prompt itself contains an instruction to generate the ASCII art together with a description and the ASCII art itself. As we are using supervised fine tuning, the training objective is to try to reconstruct the training examples by starting with an empty string and simply predicting the next tokens. And by doing this, we hope that the LLM learns which tokens belong together and this way learns which uh, shapes that a ASCII cat consists of. I set up the training hyperparameters and trained for three epochs. If you're unfamiliar with fine-tuning LoRa's, don't worry because I will create an in-depth guide about this soon. However, after doing some inference, it became clear that the three epochs weren't enough for the AI to output consistent uh, and coherent ASCII cats. 
as you see that the LLM does seem to have learned some shapes, but it isn't generating the correct gets. So I decided to train for 10 epochs instead. And by doing this, the results were a lot more co cohesive, but the downside was that it started to resemble my training set more and more as many ASCII cats it generated just came out of my training set. To prevent overfitting, I decided to try two things. First off, expand my dataset with more cats and to make the prompt itself more descriptive to also include features of the generated cats, such as the style, pose, orientation, size and body style of the cat. I thought by doing this it would not only help the LLM to learn uh, how to output the ASCII cats, but also for me at inference time to generate some unique ones. Besides just scraping other people's ASCII art, I also try to uh, make ChatGPT come up with some new ASCII art this time in an attempt to do some model distillation. But I found out once again that the larger models are very bad at outputting ASCII cats and the cats they do generate are usually straight up copied from websites I was scraping anyways. So hey, at least I'm not the only one who's actually overfitting on its dataset. I once again first trained for 3 epochs, however I quickly noticed that the descriptions I added in my prompt had no effect and my llama model was outputting the same trippy cat figures as before. I also fine tuned on 10 epochs and although the inference was once again starting to resemble my training set, the parameters of my prompt had no effect at all. So I couldn't change things such as the pose, orientation or style. Clearly it's a very hard task for LLMs to learn uh, concept, uh, concepts such as what the actual style or pose or orientation of an ASCII image means. And on top of this all, after trying to run the model locally, I noticed that there was a huge performance drop compared to the results I was seeing in Google Colab. To run your model locally um, using Llama, C++ or Olama, you have to convert both your LoRa adapter and the base model to GGUF format. However, I found out that the 4-bit quantization which GGUF offers isn't exactly the same as the 4-bit quantization that is used when loading my model in safe tensor format on Google Colab. So the LoRa adapters I had trained weren't applied to the exact same weights as during fine tuning, which I found out leads to, uh, leads to a massive performance drop. After a lot of headaches, and reading many GitHub threads, I realized the only way to get accurate performance was by fine-tuning a model I could actually run locally without having to quantize it. So that's why for my next run I decided to fine-tune Llama 3.2 3 billion parameters instead, which in full precision takes around 6 gigabytes of RAM, so I could both train and do inference on this model without having to quantize it. I also realized that the fact that after training the output of the model resembled the training set wasn't as bad because I could just use generation parameters such as the top P, temperature and others to make the model sample less likely tokens and thus create unique ASCII cats. So for my last and final training run my objectives were fine tune Llama 3.2 collect even more training data, which I realized I could do by letting um, LLMs generate variations of data I already had. So instead of letting the LLM come up with entirely new data, I could just let it get some variations. I also removed the entire completion prompt as I realized it had no impact. So my dataset just consisted of only the ASCII art and to do the inference of the model, I would just have to provide it with an empty prompt. After three epochs, the results were once again a bit wacky, but after five epochs, the results were a lot better. So I converted both my model and adapter to, GDU, to GGUF format to generate new ASCII cats locally. I created an inference notebook, which loads both my base model as well as the trained LoRa adapter. I then chose some inference settings that promote creativity, such as increasing the temperature, top P, 
I also introduced a frequency and repetition penalty and then just let the model generate 50 or more cats. To my surprise, the results were actually funny and interesting. As expected, a lot of misformed cats were generated, but between them there were some nice, interesting and unique cats. I tested out a lot of different settings, so here is a, a quick compilation of my favorite ones. Although the results are better than I expected, it's still quite hard to have the LLM output new and good ASCII cats. It's not like it can personally do any better, but it certainly doesn't match the capabilities of the actual human ASCII artists. If you're interested in fine-tuning your own model, um, the GitHub repo is in the description. I also included links to both the GGUF of the base model as well as the GGUF of the fine-tuned LoRa adapter. So you can also generate your own ASCII cats using the parameters that I trained. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below if what you think about this. Do you think you can do any better or did you generate some unique cats? Make sure to let me know and I hope I see you guys in the next video.